Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into outreach and strategic planning. My guest today is Glenn Terry. He is the Director of Outreach and Strategic Partnerships for the NCAA, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony, for having me. Sure. So uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? I, I did my undergraduate at Indiana University Bloomington and got my graduate degree from the University of Detroit Mercy. Wow, fantastic. So let's just go back a little bit in time before we get into what you're doing today. Okay. Um, so in high school, when did you start thinking about college? Was it freshman year, senior year? When did it all begin for you? I probably started thinking about college my junior year. Um, I had I had a couple of people uh, in my life, my coaches, my, my high school coach and my high school principal uh, took a real interest in me and told me that, you know, if I kept my grades up and, and I did the job on the track that, you know, I could write my own ticket and, and, and possibly get a scholarship. So mm -hmm. that was about the time I started thinking about uh, a college. Okay. And, and were there many schools that recruited you or did you get recruited? Got recruited. Uh, at the time that uh, I finished high school, I was a state champion in Ohio. Uh, and and had some great success in the hurdle, so had a, had had my choice of colleges. Great. So you had many schools to pick from. Yes. So IU wins. IU wins. And you go to IU. What's the school like? Uh, I graduated in a high school class of probably about 400 students, and you go to a a a large major university with 40,000. <laughs> so my largest class freshman year, I want to say, was. Uh, sociology or psychology and had 500 students in it so wow. it's like you're sitting in a movie theater so it it was it was daunting it really was yeah and and so now you graduate from IU and then go on for a graduate degree uh, how does one go from graduating uh, to where you are today well uh, made a couple stops before uh, graduated uh, in 93 uh, trained for the Olympic trials in 96 uh, retired after the Olympic trials after I didn't make the team and trying to figure out what the next step was for me. Talking to my college coach, uh, he inquired about if I'd be interested in, in, in coaching. And it sounded highly interesting. Uh, did some work uh, to really update my resume and, and try to get into the coaching field. Okay. Started coaching and pursuing my, my graduate degree finished my graduate degree and then moved on to becoming a head coach uh, down at Radford University in Virginia. Spent six and a half years down there, had a great experience guiding, guiding young people, and wanted just something a little bit larger. Uh, the NCAA was moving the then NCAA Clearinghouse to Indianapolis, and I applied, went through a series of interviews, and was fortunate enough to get the position and now I, I have the responsibility of educating eight million student athletes across the country and around the world. So uh, give me the role of the Director of Outreach and Strategic Partnerships. What do you do? Uh, the Director of Outreach and Strategic Partnerships uh, is really responsible for outreach and education uh, across the board to high school students, uh, the high school community, meaning athletic directors, uh, high school counselors, scholastic and non-scholastic coaches, anybody who has uh, contact with the high school athlete. So we're trying to make sure that they know what they need to know about pursuing uh, college athletics and getting a degree at the same time. Um, just trying to make sure that we educate them early enough so that they don't miss out on the opportunity of, of a scholarship and an education 
at one of our great Division One, Division Two, or Division Three colleges and universities. Oh, so so uh, is your job across the country? Do you go to every single high school uh, athletic uh, uh, event, uh, athletic directors event? How, how do you how do you do everything? Uh, we don't go to every. We, we it would be tough for me to, to to try to educate all eight million. But what we do is uh, we find those states where. Uh, we have our highest number of registrants. Uh, we utilize our data uh, to go into the, those states and those districts where we have our highest number of registrants, those student athletes. And what we try to do is educate those, those high school personnel to make sure that they are the boots on the ground uh, to educate those student athletes and families. Gotcha. We also partner with our colleges and universities uh, as they are active in the community and making sure that their athletic staff as well as their coaching staff know what they need to know as they are going out and recruiting student athletes to join their programs. Gotcha. And uh, the Eligibility Center, um, what's the role of the Eligibility Center uh, with the NCAA? The Eligibility Center is really charged with uh, a couple of different uh, facets. We are charged with academic and amateur certifications. So ensuring, when I talk about academic certifications, ensuring that student athletes uh, meet the academic requirements, showing that they are ready for the rigors, the academic rigors on a college campus. Mm -hmm. So they have certain uh, requirements that they must meet in their four years of high school. And then we also have the amateur uh, certification, ensuring that they are an amateur in nature and haven't professionalized themselves by taking some form fashion of pay for play. Gotcha. So um, in high school, how many core classes is that to, to get them at the college level? For Division One and Division II, they're required to have 16 core courses. We usually, when I talk to student athletes, I tell them that they're, if they're taking one math, one science, one social studies, and one English course every year for four years, there's no way that they can miss on the core requirements for, for core courses. Gotcha, and, and uh, athletically, is there any requirements athletically for any of the sports? Well, not, not for the eligibility center, but the requirements to get that scholarship, each coach and each university have their own standards of what they're looking for in the student athletes that they want to participate in their programs. Okay, so uh, the methods uh, that, that uh, the outreach uses for um, the focus of activities, what, what are some of the methods that you use to, to get the activities out there, to get the understanding to the, to the high school students? We utilize social media. Uh, we use Twitter, uh, Instagram, we'll use uh, Facebook. We want to be where the kids are. Um, we'll also uh, utilize our web. We'll use el eligibilitycenter.org and, and, and NCAA.org, our, our, our parent brand, to, to ensure that all of our informational materials are readily available, not only for the high school community, but for those parents and those student athletes that really want to know. So we'll, we'll make sure that we, we use video, uh, we'll use uh, PowerPoint, mm. we'll also utilize uh, just PDF, PDF materials to, to ensure that they have something that they can print up and know exactly what they need to know to meet the initial eligibility requirements. Now, is there something out there for the students that they could look up on NCAA.org uh, that tells them what happens when they're a freshman, what happens when they're a sophomore, what happens when they're a junior, what happens when they're a senior? Great question. Uh, we have what's called the NCAA, the, the student timeline. And it will walk a student through the things that they need to do grades nine through 12 to ensure that uh, they're aware of everything that they need to do in a timely fashion. Now, the earlier grades, like freshman year and sophomore year, is anything really happening? Because a lot of parents always talk about, well, that seems like it's too early. So what do you say for freshman and sophomore years? I'll be honest with you. I think that it actually begins in eighth grade. Uh, when you look at student athletes and, and, and they're making that transition from eighth to ninth grade, that is probably the, the largest transition that they will make. So the academics, making sure that they are academically sound. If they're sound their freshman year, making that transition from eighth to ninth grade, data tells us that 
they will be much more likely to be successful in grades 10 through 12. Wow. Whereas if you have those students that struggle in grade nine, it's, you know, it's, it, it's really tough for them to turn a 1.8 or a 1.9 up to a 2.8, 2.9, 3.0 trying to get uh, admitted to the college or university of your choice. Mm. So what we're doing now is we're trying to really partner with uh, junior high schools and, and middle schools and, and those districts around the country to really educate student athletes and families in the middle schools about the transition to ninth grade mm -hmm. in, in ensuring that they will uh, they'll be successful in ninth grade and beyond. So one of the things that we're doing is we're building, we've built what's called the parent, uh, I'm sorry, the profile page. And the profile page is a free account that students can, can use and, and register for. And what we will do is we will provide timely tips on a little bit of everything. Uh, we'll provide tips on academic achievement. We'll talk about uh, nutrition. We'll talk about getting proper rest, uh, time management, just things that all students and, and student athletes need to know as they're making not only the transition from middle school to high school, but that transition of high school into college. Mm. And, and what, what would you say on uh, junior year and senior year uh, what's really happening with the student athlete those two years? That's, that's the time that they're starting to take the SAT or the ACT. So those standardized tests and really ensuring that they're doing the things that they need to do as recruiting is, is, is as, as it's starting to take off. Uh, starting to research colleges, looking to see what environment is for you. Do you want to be at a school that has 30 to 40,000 students, or do you want to be at a, at a, at a smaller university that has three to 4,000? Hmm. Um, you know, is, is, is your faith, is that something that, that's, is that important to you? Uh, what type of program do you want to study? Uh, what type of program do you want to be in? Do you want to be in a, a, a Big Ten program, or, or do you want to go to it and, and be a star in a, in a smaller type environment? So it, it's really a time for, for that student to really start looking and seeing what, what type of environment they want to be in. So by the time they're seniors, do they have these opportunities that, are, that they're faced with? If, if they've done the job on, on, on the track and, or on the field of play and, and in the classroom, absolutely. You know, if, if you've done the job, I, I always say that the, the things that you do on the field will get you noticed by coaches. The things that you do in the classroom is what's going to get you the scholarship. Mm. Yeah. So uh, eligibility uh, requirements and challenges. Um, what are some of the uh, <clears throat> eligibility requirements that kids need? What are some of the challenges that they're faced with? We've talked a little bit about the 16 core courses. So for Division One, if you're or, or Division Two, one math, one science, one English, one social studies every year for four years, you'll meet the core course requirement for those 16 core courses. Uh, for Division One, they have an academic requirement of a 2.3 in those core courses. So we won't use anything like gym, music, uh, auto shop. We won't use those courses. We will only use those core courses, those academic courses, to certify you. So it. For division, division one, it's 2.3. For division two, it's a 2.2. And then for, uh, for both divisions, they have what's called the sliding scale. So your SAT or your ACT sum score must match your, your GPA, your core course GPA on the sliding scale. And uh, division three schools, what, what happens there? Is they it's free willing or what happens? <laughs> Great question. Well, the Eligibility Center doesn't certify Division Three students, but if you gain admission to the college or university of your choice in Division Three, you're automatically eligible to compete your freshman year. Oh, great. So now, isn't there an eligibility number that they need uh, to, to go on to college? What are some of their requirements for that? So you have to register with the Eligibility Center. Uh, like I told you, we have the profile account and we also have a certification account. If you're trying to play Division I or Division II, you have to have a certification account. You can register for a certification account at eligibilitycenter.org. Uh, the registration takes about 30 to 45 minutes 
and there is a $90 registration fee for domestic students and a $150 registration fee for international students. Wow. And so they get this number and now they're eligible to, to, to do that at Division One, Division Two. Well, they'll, they'll get the number and then we'll require to ask for their, their transcripts and their test scores. Gotcha. Once we have their transcripts and their test scores, after their junior year, what we'll do is we'll do what we call a preliminary certification. We will give them a look of where they are after their junior year and what they need to complete their senior year to meet their, their, their initial eligibility certification. Okay. After they, after they graduate, we'll ask for a final high school transcript with proof of graduation, and that's where we will do their final academic certification prior to them enrolling in the fall. Now, everyone should do it only because they don't know where they're going until senior year. Correct. Right? So Correct. if they end up going to a Division three school, uh, maybe they don't need that, but it's better off if they do it than not do it. That plus the fact of if you know where, if, you, if you're kind of certain of the type of university that you want to go to, it, it helps. So registering for the eligibility center, it provides an opportunity. Yeah. You know, you gain that opportunity to compete at the Division I or Division II level. If you are positive that you don't want to, you know, that Division I or Division II are not for you and you have your heart set on a Division three college or university, Absolutely, there's no need for you to, to have a registration account. You can still have the, the profile account mm -hmm. and we'll still send you information about uh, some of the things that, that will help you transition from high school to college. Now, is it beneficial for the student to um, register early? I, I would say yes. Um, registering early gives us the opportunity to provide you with some information on things that will help you transition. Um, the earlier that you get us transcripts, the earlier we can provide you uh, a look at where you are after two semesters or four semesters mm -hmm. or six semesters. So I always say prior planning helps to prevent poor performance. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're planning, making sure that those things that you need to do, um, you'll, you'll ensure that, that you're ready when the time is right. Now, do you, do you see students doing it just uh, as early as freshman year, or do you start seeing students doing it in middle school, like eighth grade? I see most students doing it right around the latter stages of their freshman year, early, early part of their sophomore year. Okay. That's about the time you've completed your, your freshman year and, and you completed uh, freshman football or freshman basketball, you know if, if, if you're serious about it after that and you know if you want to continue playing. So, so so does anyone actually register in eighth grade? Do uh, they, they actually do that? There, there, there are a small handful, uh, but usually those are the those are the the student athletes that are registering for our profile page at uh, that time. So gotcha. that's what we're encouraging. Usually, in eighth grade, you're really not certain, but register for the profile page. It's absolutely free. We'll provide you some information and and keep in touch with you about things that you may want to know about. Good. So, so, but parents don't need to register prior to that. It no, shouldn't. They not shouldn't at go all. way, way into uh, the elementary schools of, of grade school of some sort. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, so, how about the transition from middle school to high school? Is there a big transition? You were saying before. I think that there is. Um, it, it's it's one of those that I want to. I we want to ensure that they are academically sound. Uh, making that transition. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that they know what they need to know and while we're doing that we're, we're trying to educate the the high school athletic direct well the the middle school athletic director the middle school counselors and working with those middle school coaches to make sure that they are conveying the same message so that student athletes are getting it from a, a myriad of fronts so that they can they, they know exactly what they need to know. So now how about uh, the longevity of uh, education in college mm -hmm. compared to just being a collegiate athlete? I, I mean th there's a lot going on out there where you know parents think oh it's all about the sport it's not about education. What's your take on all of that? I'm one of those that believe 
fully in, in the fact of your education is going to take you for the next 40, 50 years. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to, to have a, a, a small professional career. I, I look at student athletes and if you look at the, the average NFL career, the average NFL career is three years. So you get drafted at 22, you, you retire by 25. What happens for the next 40 years? You have to have that education. That education is, is vital to compete in today's, in, in, in today's society. And, and we're at the point now where a college degree is like a high school diploma to our parents. Mm -hmm. Our parents were required to have a high school diploma to get a good job. And now it's to the point where a, a college degree is needed to, to have a decent job. And for most positions, if you really want to earn what you want to earn and really want to maximize your professional development, yeah. we're at that point where an advanced degree, a master's degree is, is, is kind of necessary. So do you see a lot of athletes, uh, not just in football and basketball, but do you see them taking those extra steps, getting masters, doctrines type of thing? Um, because there's not a lot of different uh, professional sports after college. So, Correct. you know, if you're doing track or tennis or field hockey or lacrosse, uh, you know, the, 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 it's limited once you get past college. Correct. I'm seeing a lot more student athletes really taking advantage of the opportunities that, that are available to them. Taking advantage of, of resume writing and, and, and cover letter writing and internships. Um, they, are, they are really keen upon uh, what they need to do to continue to develop. Um, we are, you know, at the NCAA, we, you, you, you've heard the phrase, uh, you know, each one of our student athletes will go pro in something other than athletics, you know, very, you know, and, and with that, we want to ensure that, that all of our student athletes are prepared for society, that, that they are prepared, prepared for the next level that, that they are encountering. Um, you know, they've gone to school for some for four, five years and, and have really not only honed their craft on the field, but they've honed their minds in the classroom yeah. and, and to prepare themselves for, for, for life. They are ambassadors for what hard work and athletics, hard work in the classroom and athletics are, are about. They, they are really, truly uh, the, the true embodiment of, of what a champion is. So do you find uh, the student athlete at the college level, uh, when they get out of college, um, do they have a better sense of, of being in the workforce and working with people because they played a sport at the college level? I think that they learn a, a valuable lesson uh, being a part of a, of, of, a, of a team, of a unit. Uh, they learn teamwork. Uh, they learn uh, self-control. They learn, they learn the ability to deal with a loss. Very few student athletes come out of come out of college undefeated. You know, everybody takes takes a loss, and it's how you respond to that loss. Uh, they learn how to communicate well with others. So you know, companies today are looking. You know, when 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 they are looking for uh, the next the the next phase of their workforce, the next group of their workforce. They're looking for student athletes. They're looking for somebody who's who's had that experience. Mm -hmm. They may not have had the work experience because they've they've spent four to five years in college, but they've had a great deal of experience in a competitive environment, yeah. in 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 communicating with others in high stress situations, and 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 they're, they they walk into a a company or an association really prepared, you know, a little bit more prepared to deal. Uh, with with that work environment, similar to things like uh, the military uh, students, right? Kids that go into Correct. military stuff, they, Correct. they get the same type on of, the job training. Yeah, they get the same type of thing when they get out of out of college, right? Absolutely. So so um, we're coming to the end of our show. So I, I, my usually my my last question for my guests is, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents out there? and their students, you know, the, the sons and daughters, 
that want to play sports at the college level, what advice do you want to give to those parents and, and their, their kids? There's, there's our website, www.eligibilitycenter.org. I ask parents to be proactive. Um, don't always uh, depend on someone else uh, to do everything uh, as far as your, your student's eligibility. Uh, take a proactive role. Uh, look at your school's list of courses. Uh, make sure that your, your, your son or daughter's um, class schedule mirrors what's on their school's list of courses so that they are taking uh, core courses that have been approved by the NCAA. Um, make sure that they, they have enough courses each year to meet the academic requirements. And if they have any questions, don't hesitate to call the Eligibility Center. Um, we, we have a great staff, of uh, great customer service staff, and, and they're very easy to reach, 877-262-1492. And, and we're open from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and more than happy to answer any questions that, uh, that they have. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate Anthony, it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate you too. it. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.